What's up, everybody? This is Dustin Stelzer with another episode of Journey to Master. Today, I'm going to talk about electrical examinations. All right, so uh, I have taken a few exams getting up to my master license. I had to take uh, what's called a residential wireman's exam, and that's after two years of apprenticing. You can take a, a, an exam that would allow you to run a residential only job. You still have to be under the supervision of a master, um, but you no longer have to be under a journeyman. You can at least go wire a residential place. Um, so you still have to have 4,000 hours to be able to do that, and the state caps you at 2,000 hours a year. So you still have to have two years of experience to be able to do it. Um, but I, where I was at with it, I learned fast and I worked really hard and I gave a shit a lot. So like once I hit my two year mark, um, the journeyman that I was working under was like, man, I, I think you're ready to take the test. You know, like we've gone through, I don't know how many houses and wired them and you don't really have to ask very many questions anymore. Like you get it, you understand how to do this. So I would feel comfortable leaving a job and letting you try to run a job now. Um, so I was like, all right, fuck it all. I have my hours. I'll go take my test. I didn't have any knowledge of the code book. I didn't, I had a code book, but it was like, th like three years old. Um, but I didn't, you know, it was always daunting when I looked at the code book and tried to read it. I always tried to read it from like cover to cover and that's not what you want to do. Um, you'll forget everything that you read and they use so much weird terminology that you don't understand what, you know, like. Uh, what the difference between a grounded conductor and an ungrounded conductor is, and a grounding conductor and a grounded conductor, and like there's just lots of utilization equipment, you know, like what what is all of that? Um, so it was really confusing. So what I did is I just went in to take the test, and I used the index in the back, and I just indexed terms, and I went very quickly. Um, there's like 80 questions, and the test is about four hours long so in four hours I had to qu answer 80 questions and most of the questions are pretty easy I mean I took the test and I made an 88 on it on my first go round um, not having any experience with how to use a code book which is kinda silly because I feel like you should have to know how to use a code book before you're eligible to test so just my my thoughts on it but anyways I passed uh, I took all four hours I mean I scrubbed through everything the cool thing is like in Texas at least Everything's on a computer. So as you're going through and answering all these questions, you can mark specific questions, and then all of the marked questions are saved, and you can go back and refigure anything that you've marked that you think you might have gotten wrong or stuff that you couldn't find. But I used every minute of that four hours, and I passed. Um, so then I did another two years of work, uh, started doing some service work and things, you know, where I, I was getting more into the code book. And uh, I had to find things because I was finding problems and I had to figure out code. It wasn't just a construction environment where you're kind of used to the same thing every day. This was coming across all kinds of different stuff um, that I had just never been across. And the guys that I was working with, they all used the code book religiously. They had it out every day. They're like, hey, you know, how do we do this? And how do we do this? Well, what does the code say? So I got a lot more in-depth with the code. Um, but still probably not enough. So after my second two years, I had my four year mark, I had all my hours and I went and applied, took the journeyman's test and I failed it by one question. That was fucking irritating. Um, so I was still just indexing. I did, still didn't, wasn't like competent with how to use the code book. I just, you know, was able to hack my way through it. So then I went and took a code class, like a, an exam prep class for journeyman. And holy shit, man, that opened my entire mind it was like three or four hundred dollars um, three days of classes you just go for like three full days and by the end of it you learn so much that you didn't even know was in the code book or like you know like how certain things are supposed to be how to do calculations and how to like break down your understanding of the code book it's broke into like you know eight nine sections that are pertinent to everything um, they're actual articles. I mean, like some of y'all are gonna be like, "That's not what they're called." I'm just saying, like, rel like relative to people that have no understanding of this. There's eight main chapters in the code book, um, and you have to understand like what the first four have in common and what the second, you know, five through eight have in common. And there's indexes in the back and all kinds of stuff. But 
when you go through a code class, you learn like there is a methodology to the code book and there's a way that they repeat information and there's terms that they use and all of those things kind of hit you. So after I took that class, I went and took my test and I made, I think I made an 80, I don't, I don't even remember, but I passed it. So did another two years, um, probably three years at this point. I don't know, because there was some time where I was in the trade where I was like on again, off again, waiting tables, doing electrical, and I would just go back and forth. But at this point, um, I had at least six hours of experience and at least 12,000 hours. For your journeyman, it's 8,000 hours. Um, but for master, it's 12,000 hours. So <coughs> when I hit about 10,000 hours, I started studying. So I had about a year left before I could test for my master license. So I got a hold of a whole bunch of Mike Holt books. I got his grounding and bonding book. I got his uh, understanding the NEC part one and part two. I got his motor controls book. I got uh, exam prep, like the, the contractor's license or master license exam prep book, a um, whole bunch of practice tests. And I spent a year studying. I went on YouTube. I was trying to understand everything from electrical theory. I would look up, like, there's some YouTube videos out there where they just pop up exam questions at you, and you can pause it and actually try to do a test. There's places online you can go. There's other people that have created, like DeWalt has a book that they make that has like all of the electrical exams, just t uh, test prep questions in there. So I did so many test prep questions. And then using Mike Holt's material, I was able to pull all of his like examples and stuff. And I made a whole other test prep book of my own questions that I knew were the verified right answers. And I studied my ass off, man. And I learned a hell of a lot. Um, in a year and so I felt very very confident when I walked into that testing center that I was going to pass it no doubt and uh, I took it and I think I got an 80 um, but I, t I passed it on my first go around and what was crazy is when I was in there taking it the master's a five hour test and I think there's a hundred questions on it as well um, but you need every bit of that five hours I mean it is a very very difficult uh, test you get a site plan you got to figure out you know all of these different like there's washer and dryer you know, laundromats and then there's like retail places and dental offices and you have to figure out what panels go where and what this transformer is doing and what the voltage of it is and um, there's a lot of calculating off of a plan that you have to figure out there's a whole bunch of conduit fill and sizing services for like really weird places um, there's not very many basic things. There's a lot of math to it. So it just takes a long time to hack through that entire test. But what was crazy about it is like, I studied so much and I thought that I had this really great understanding of the code book. And when I got in there, it's like, it's like the test was every question that I had never seen before. It was fucking crazy. There's a lot of it that I did know, but there, most of it was like worded in ways that it was like it kind of shook my confidence on how I should answer um, but I still indexed and figured everything out but now I had an understanding of the entire f code book so I wasn't wasting time looking for like you know where's a disconnect supposed to be for a, a dryer and I'm looking in like pool equipment you know just not knowing where I am in the code book <coughs> so anyways I still passed on my first go around it was very difficult and I crossed my fingers when I hit that submit button I was like fuck I failed this there's no way I passed this uh, my, my confidence was all completely gone and uh, at the end of it there was probably 10 questions that I was just like dude I have no clue so I'm just gonna go c c c c c and just guess on them I did you know I took the best guess that I could I like eliminated options that I knew were no fucking way and so I at least had like a 50 50 chance of getting them right but sure as shit dude I passed it and passed it pretty decently too so the electrical exams are state by state. They're different everywhere. I don't know what they're like in Canada or what they're like in the UK, um, but it's all very similar. Um, you have to go through a lot of training, go through some classroom, understand this trade from a, from a scientific theoretical standpoint, as well as a practical application wearing your tools standpoint, plus knowing the legalities of everything and, and how to do things the right way versus the wrong way and the reasons why. Um, but all of those things aside, that was my experience with uh, the electrical testing. So um, if you guys have any other questions or you want to share your stories, 
definitely leave them in the comments below or go to journeytomaster.com. You can leave those in the comments below too. Um, you can go to the, the Facebook group, Journey to Master. Um, share your stories there. You can join the Electrical Wizardry group that I started a while ago. Share your stories there. Um, or if you have any other questions about the, uh, the exams that you're going to have to go through. But love you guys. Take care, and I'll see you in the next episode.